Hey guys, how's it going? This is Moby from Moby Motion, and today I'm doing the first of three tutorials on how I made this video. Now, a lot of techniques went into this, but today we'll be covering the lighting, so how I made the HDR panorama, and how I made it look like there are light rays coming in. The other parts will cover everything else from realistic glossy materials, motion blur, all the way to post processing and how to reduce your render time. Let's get started. So, once you've opened up Blender, you want to open the file that you made in my last tutorial. And this is just a Kevin Planck simulation. I'm just going to turn on my screencast keys so you can see exactly what I'm doing in the corner there. So, this is what you made last time. It looks very bright and orange, but it's quite simple. You can see it has a sun lamp that's causing a shadow here, but otherwise the lighting is in a very simple setup. So, the first thing we're going to do is add an HDR panorama for lighting. And this will give it a much more lifelike feel. So you want to, first of all, download some HDR panoramas. I'll put links to those in the description. And then go to your world view and change this color from RGB to environment texture. And now you get this open button. You want to click that, find your panoramas, pick one. I'm going to use Hamarakuya Bridge, the 3K.HDR version. And again, I'll link to this in the description. And just open that. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, it's added this image into the background of our scene. So if we rotate this around now with the middle mouse button and press 5 to give us some perspective, you can see that the scene is now surrounded by this panorama, which is great. Let's go back to our camera view by pressing 0 on the number pad. Now, let's say you want to change this particular background so that you want a different part of the scene showing in your camera. So let's say at the moment we're seeing this patch over here, but you want to see something over there. Let's do that now. Just go to the camera by pressing 0, and this lets you see the background of your scene. Now, if you haven't got this opened up, you can, you can open up the node editor by clicking here, dragging down, and here, clicking Node Editor. Now, you don't want to edit the material of the object, you want to edit the material of the world. So click the world icon here, and what we want to change is the mapping for this environment texture. So, we need to add two nodes. The first one, you add by pressing Shift A, I'm going to Input Texture Coordinate, the next one you want to add by pressing Shift A, Vector and Mapping. Now we want to connect these all up, connect Generated to Vector and Vector to this image texture. Now if we press Shift Z to preview our render, you'll see that nothing's changed. And that's because we haven't changed the mapping node yet. We have a lot of settings we can play with, but what I'm going to change is, is this Z rotation. This just rotates the image. And that's a nice view there. Next, we're going to add some textured lighting. So this is a way of projecting an image onto the scene to make it look like the light isn't just from a simple light source, like a sun. So we're going to delete the sun by selecting it, pressing X and delete, and press Shift A and a lamp, which is a spot. Now go into your top view by pressing 7, make it orthographic with 5, this makes everything flat, and just grab it, place it somewhere in front of your tower, because I want to rotate it so that it hits the tower from above, and also so that it comes in from the top left. So just go to your side view and rotate it sideways, go to your front view by pressing 1, and rotate it this way as well. And now it should be shining onto your tower. Just preview the render with Shift Z. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this yet, but the reason I'm only rendering the viewport and nothing around it is because I've ticked this border button. And that saves a huge amount of render time. So the spot lamp doesn't seem to be doing much because it's not a very bright lamp. You need to give it really high values for strength for it to look like anything. 
So let's give it 30,000. See what that looks like. Okay. Just make it a bit bigger so it goes across the whole scene. And that's awesome. Make it a bit less bright. 20,000. Okay, that's great. We just want to texture it now. So we're going to give it a image of light shining through trees to project onto our scene. And that's going to make it look like the light is shining through trees. So just exit your render preview by pressing Z. We're going to do this in the node editor. So go back to object mode and we're going to plug in some textures into this emission. So press Shift A, add a texture which is an image texture and we want to just add the picture. And I'm going to link to the picture I'm using in the description. It's from Pixabay. Press open navigate to the texture and plug this in here and now we need to add the same two nodes we added before to give us that control over exactly how it's projected so a texture coordinate node pressing shift A and texture coordinate and press shift A again to add a vector mapping node we want to plug them in not in the same way we still plug the mapping node into the image texture but this time we're going to use normal from the texture coordinate. So that goes in there. And let's see what this looks like. Let's rotate our view to get a nice, almost top-down view. Press Shift Z. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so you can see it's already projecting this image onto the scene. Now, I like my detail to be finer. So the best way I find to do that is by making the image smaller. And you can play around with that with this scale option in the mapping node. So let's make the X and Y values 2 and 2. And this just makes the image two times smaller. This has an effect on the streaks as well. So later when we add in the light streaks, by making the image smaller, we're going to make those streaks finer. I think they look better that way. So there you have it. We've added textured lighting. And all we need to add now is the volumetric lighting. And what that does is make it look like there are light rays coming into the picture. So we're going to add the volumetric lighting. And the way to do that is by pressing Shift A to add a cube. And this cube is going to be our air, basically. This is what's going to catch the light rays that are being given off by this spot lamp. And it's going to mean that we can see them as they go through the air. So let's move it to the middle by pressing Shift S snap cursor to center and now if we press shift s again we can move the selection which is the box to the cursor go to your camera view and just scale up this cube so that it takes up the whole viewport you might have to grab it in the x-axis so it doesn't get too big and you can see now that it's taking up the whole of the camera viewport Let's also make it a bit bigger, but we don't want it to go too high. We don't want it too much higher than the tower. So we do that by pressing uh, S for scale and Shift Z to lock the Z axis. And this should be fine. You can play around with it later if it's, if it's not right. So if you rendered this now, you just see the cube in your image. And we want to stop that by, first of all, just giving the box a material. We can do that here. And let's make this surface completely transparent. And we do that by setting the surface type to transparent, BSDF, and the color to pure white. Now, if you rendered this, you wouldn't see the cube at all. But we want it to catch the light coming off the spot lamp. And the way we do that is by adding a volume scatter. So we can do that here. Let's just see what this looks like. Press Shift Z to give a preview render, just waiting for it to render. And it's very dark. Let's make the density lower, 0 0.01, much lower. And OK, the effect is quite subtle, but it has made the air a bit thicker and mistier. Let's increase this. Let's try 0 0.05. I'm going to make this full screen by pressing Shift and Space, and just to zoom in so we get a nice view come back in a few minutes once this is rendered. So this has been rendering for a few minutes now and it's looking good. You can see these light streaks, they're quite subtle, they're not 
overpowering, it's not all you can see in the image. So I'm going to keep the scattering value the same. But if you did want to make them more obvious or less obvious, then what you want to play around with is this density setting. So if you increase this, the air becomes thicker and it catches more rays, they'll be more noticeable. Or if you decrease it, the rays will be less noticeable. Do you bear in mind that if you increase this, it'll make the air thicker as well. So that might make the scene darker. And you'll have to compensate for that by increasing the brightness, firstly, of your spot lamp. And also you might have to increase the brightness of your HDR image, which is the background lighting, and you can do that here. So the lighting for this scene is starting to look good. All that's left is some tweaks, and that'll be it for today's tutorial. I'm just going to change the color of these planks to make them look more like wood. So I'm going to select one of these planks, go over to the Material tab, and just to save us some render time, we don't want to be rendering this whole box just to play around with the material. So I'm going to press Shift B and just select an area of planks where you can see the color clearly. And now it's only going to render this little area. Just bear in mind that I'm in render preview mode, which you get to by pressing Shift Z. So let's play around with this material and see if we can find a more realistic wood material. Play around with this as much as you like. So let's see what this looks like over the whole scene now. Let's shift B, select the whole thing. And now this has undone our border from earlier, so check this. And now it'll render the whole uh, camera view, but nothing outside of that. Let's shift Z to preview. Yeah, and that's looking nice. The background is a bit dark, so I'm going to turn it up to 1. If you want to use the same plank material that I'm using, here is the hex code. You can just copy this and I'll get the exact same material. I hope you enjoyed that. I'd really appreciate it if you could answer some of these polls, and that just helps me tailor these videos to exactly what you need. As always, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials, and support me on Patreon if you want loads of my blend files, including the one from this tutorial. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.